Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we'll learn how to use network policy in Kubernetes. We want to apply the principle of the least privileged access, which is one of the principles of the zero trust network. This principle states that resources should have the strict minimum access to only the resources they should access to in order to work as expected. In Kubernetes, this means that the pods should have the strict minimum and the strict minimum access to only the pods they need to connect to. If I, ha for an instance, if I have a front end that connects to a back end and a back end that connects to a database, this means my front end should never get access to my database. While in Kubernetes, you know, each pod can connect to any other pod in the cluster even if that pod is in a different namespace. So we don't have that kind of isolation. Here with network policy, we'll enforce that isolation and we'll enforce network policies so that pods will connect to only the pods they need to access to. This will avoid, for example, the backend pod from the dev environment that connects to the database from my production environment. And this can accidentally happen if we forget to uh, change the service name for that database in production, then we'll hit the database from the, de from the development environment. So networking policies will avoid such mistakes or such problems. Kubernetes actually defines the interface or defines a specification for network policy, but it doesn't define the implementation. The implementation could be provided by some other uh, solutions like Calico, which we'll be uh, seeing today. It's also provided by Azure Network Policy, or it's also provided by Wave and many other solutions. Calico is an open source project available here on projectcalico.org from which you can see the documentation of the project with some uh, samples. So to start my demo, uh, I have already posted the source code with the scripts that we'll be using during this demo on this repo on GitHub. So you can uh, check it out, you can clone it to uh, follow with me in this uh, demo. I'll try or I'll make this demo on a Kubernetes cluster. You can try this also with Minikube on running on your own machine or you can run it, run it on a managed Kubernetes cluster as I have already done on Azure. But here to prepare your Kubernetes cluster, you should enable networking policy using Calico. For my IKS cluster here, if I go to networking, I have this option here for network policy, it's set to Calico. That's because when I have created my cluster, if I go to uh, the Azure portal, create the cluster, after providing the name for my cluster, I go to networking uh, tab, and from here I'll be asked if I want to either not install a solution or I can install Calico or Azure network policy. Here I have selected uh, Calico for this cluster. We can also enable it using the AZ command line. It's a switch or it's, uh, it's a switch to be enabled on to uh, Calico. We can also enable it from Terraform templates. I have already cloned this solution on my local machine and here I'll open it with my favorite code editor, VS Code. So let's start here by uh, setting up the environment for the test. So let's create a new namespace and within that namespace we'll create a backend pod. So to do that here I have the uh, a YAML manifest file for creating a namespace with a label and from the command line I'll go to apply that namespace. So let's run ls to make sure I'm in the right directory here. And then let's go to apply using kubectl command line, kubectl apply dash f. 
the number one for creating the namespace, the development namespace. So here we'll take the case that we have development um, namespace, then we create at the end another production namespace to enforce that development uh, environment or pods inside the development environment can connect only to pods within that environment itself. They cannot connect to other pods from the production environment. So to start with here, uh, let me, um, I'll create the backend pod that will be attached to my uh, development namespace. So from here I run an Nginx uh, pod that uses the Nginx uh, uh, image and then I'll add some labels to that Nginx and I'll attach it to the development namespace and I'll expose it to a service. So this will create both a pod and a service for me. That's actually the uh, same uh, output as the uh, file that we see here. So that will create a pod with those labels and that pod will be attached to the development namespace and then that will create a service with the same uh, living inside the same uh, namespace and that have the same labels. So this pod will act as my backend application. And then I have a front-end application that will try to connect to this backend. So let's simulate that. So here I'll go to create another pod that uses the Alpine image and that pod will be called front-end. It lives also inside the same namespace. And now uh, by running this using the interactive mode, I'll be able to run the, con the container inside Kubernetes and then attach to, the, to its console window. For that we see here, immediately we get access to the console. So now from within the front-end pod, I'll try to connect to the back-end pod. So how to do that? Here I'll use wget-qo- then I'll provide the uh, service name for, for my backend. Remember, when we have uh, exposed that uh, uh, pod, it will, the service name will be the name that we have provided here. It means it will be called uh, backend. So then to reach that, I'll use HTTP, then the name of the service, backend. And here we see we are able to connect to the backend that runs an Nginx uh, image. For that, we get here the output of the uh, Nginx default uh, index page, which shows here, welcome to, to Nginx. So this means that here we have uh, get access to that backend pod. Cool, now let's exit from this image. And when we exit here, that uh, front-end image will be deleted immediately. So now, each pod can connect to another pod. Now I want to start creating the first policy to enforce restrictions on the uh, in inbound access. For that, let's see the first, the first uh, uh, network policy here, which will deny all access to our backend pod. So how that's defined, so it's of type net of kind network policy that uses the networking uh, API version, and then it will be applied to a pod that lives inside the development namespace. And that pod will be our backend pod, because here we have this uh, pod selector that will look that, that will apply this policy into the pod selector that have the labels app, web app, and role backend. Remember, that's what we have already created. Uh, our pod, uh, our backend pod have those uh, labels already. So let's apply this network policy. Again, I'll use kubectl apply dash f, the name of my uh, network policy, deny all. Once it's created, I can get that uh, network policy, kubectl get with the resource network policy dash n 
or let's say dash uh, uppercase A to look for the network policies inside all the namespaces. So here we find our backend policy already defined there with the uh, selectors that we have selected with the labels. Great. Now let's try to connect to this backend pod after applying this policy. So we said with this policy, no one will, no pod will be able to connect to our backend. Let's try that actually. So I'll, g I'll run again the same command for running the uh, front-end Alpine image and from there I'll try to connect to my backend. So to do that I'll use again the command wget qo and here I'll add a timeout of two seconds to not wait uh, for an unlimited time for the request to get in. And I'll try to reach the backend service. Let's do that and within two seconds we get here download time it out. This means my front-end pod could not connect to my backend pod because we have enforced that policy to deny all access to the backend pod. Great! But now, actually what we want to do is to uh, not to deny all access to the backend pod, but we want to give access to only some specific pods. We can specify those specific pods not using their names, but using label selectors. So let's see Let's exit first and then let's see the network policy that I apply right now. So I have the, my second scenario and they have this network policy number two. This will allow access to only specific uh, pods. For that, I'm using here the ingress. This means the inbound traffic will can come from those network or those pods that have those matching labels. The labels should be those two, app, web app, and the role front end. And this means any other pod that doesn't have those labels cannot access or cannot reach my backend pod. So let's apply this network policy and let's try to, and let's verify that we can access it only with those labels. So I'll go to update the uh, network policy that I have created before. I will not create a new one, but I'll go to update it. For that, I have used the same name for the backend uh, policy as the uh, first one. So both are called with the same name. So then from here, if I go to run kubectl apply dash f to on the name of my network policy to allow, allow only pods. So this tells me now my uh, network policy was configured or updated. So now let's test with a front end that have the matching labels as specified by the network policy. For that, I use this uh, uh, Alpine image with the labels as stated by the network policy, app equal web app and role equal front end. Let's run that. And once we get access to the console inside that window, inside that pod, I run now wget to uh, to try to reach the backend. And here, yes, I could reach the backend because I get this HTML uh, default uh, uh, Nginx page. Great! So that was because we have respected the rule for labeling our front-end pod. Now let's try another test and let's try to access from a pod that does not have the specified labels. Let me clear this and then I'll use the same command to run the uh, pod, but here I'll go to remove the labels. So my pod won't have any labels actually. Let's run that. Now I've get access, so I'll try again to reach my backend from my front end that doesn't have the matching labels. And here the request will take forever, so let me cancel it and then let me run it with the timeout equal to seconds. And within two seconds, this will tell me it could not reach the backend pod. Great, let's exit this um, and finish this uh, uh, pod. And let's move to the scenario number three. So let's see what we have done until now. So from here we have our backend pod, we could connect from to that pod from pods that have the specific labels selected 
are specified by the pod selector network policy. But now we want to add even more restrictions. We want those pods, in addition to their labels, we want them to live inside the same namespace as my backend, so that pods from different namespaces cannot connect to each other, because I don't want my pods from app1 to connect to other pods from app2 or pods from the uh, development environment to connect to other pods from the production environment. Remember that example that I have stated before. We don't want the backend from production to connect to the database from development environment. We want to have as much isolation and as much restrictions as we can. That's useful also if we have one of our containers that will be hacked then that container will not be able to, to reach all the other containers. So we limit the impact of uh, hacking our system from the inside. So now we want to apply more restrictions on the namespace level. For that, we'll use another uh, selector for the namespace. For that, I have prepared the um, scenario number three, which is stated in the file number three for the network policy. So we'll take the same network policy as before, but here we'll add, in addition to the pod selector, we'll add also namespace selector. And again, with namespaces, we cannot state the name of the namespace itself, but we, we identify those namespaces using labels, as we have already done with pods. So here I'll say, I'll, sp I'll identify that namespace using a label with purpose development. Remember our development namespace already have that label because we have created that at the beginning of this demo. Before applying this network policy, let me show you that every pod in a namespace can, can connect to a pod living inside any other namespace. So for that, I switch to here and I'll create, I simulate that they have actually another namespace for that to create a new namespace. I'll use kubectl uh, namespace, create namespace. And I'll create namespace that will be called production. Then I go to label that namespace with purpose equal uh, production. Once that's labeled, I go to run a front-end pod that lives inside the production namespace, and from there, I'll try to connect to my backend. And note here how I'm, I'm adding to my service name, I'm adding the, dot, uh, the name of the namespace itself. That's how Kubernetes uh, can identify uh, pods that lives inside another namespace or services that lives inside another namespace. Let's run that command and here we get access to our backend from uh, to our backend uh, pod from another namespace. Cool. Let's exit this to destroy the the front end pod. Let's clear it and let's apply the network policy number three. kubectl apply dash f than the third scenario for the network policy that will allow access to pods from only the, na the same namespace. Once that's applied, now we want to, let's check if that works as expected. So let's run the same uh, test as before. So I'll rerun the same front-end uh, pod that have the same, th that have the required uh, or the matching labels, but which lives inside another namespace. Once the front-end pod is ready, we'll go now to use the command to try to access the backend from the development namespace, which is not the same namespace as my front-end. And we get timeout. We cannot access because we have that policy enabled. Let's exit, exit this, and now let's try with another pod that lives inside the same namespace. For that here, I reuse the same command, but here I'll go to change the namespace for this pod. So instead of production, I say development. 
and here I reuse the same command to now try to access that uh, pod but here I don't I will not need the timeout and I also can remove the development namespace here because we are in the same uh, uh, namespace so we don't need to specify the namespace with the service name cool and here we can access that pod because we have the matching labels and we have the matching namespace labels also cool so with that we could have we could uh, enforce it policies on both the pod labels and also on the namespace labels at the end of this video i want to show you some tool that is really useful to understand the uh, syntax or to understand what the network policy will do because sometimes it gets a bit more complicated so this tool will help us to understand what the what it is uh, doing that tool is called network policy viewers so it's available on this link right here and from here i can paste your uh, i can paste my yaml file and then this will give me an explanation on the uh, different policies explain it there so i have the policy for the ingress and policy for egress and from here this will tell me for the uh, target and for the source which are the namespace that will be accepted and the pods that will be accepted and what we have seen until now is only uh, network policies for the inbound or for the ingress traffic but we can also have network policies that applies for both ingress and also the egress traffic it means the outbound uh, traffic going out from the pod itself and it's used as the same way we are using the ingress but instead of the from we'll be using the uh, to right here we can also add network policies that will be applied on the uh, IP address itself or the port number we can also apply network policies on the uh, service accounts for airbag with Kubernetes with the policy that we have applied here it will be applied to the pods that lives only inside the development namespace but we can have another policy that could be applied to all the namespaces and that policy will enforce that the pods connect only to the pods within the, the same namespace and that is my number five scenario right here for policies that allow same namespace connection so here we'll go to uh, block the uh, ingress uh, uh, traffic from other uh, pods other than the one living inside the same namespace if you are looking for more resources for learning about containers and uh, Kubernetes, I would uh, invite you to check out my YouTube channel where here I post regularly uh, some videos and demos on how uh, Kubernetes works and the, the concepts of Kubernetes containers, DevOps and all the latest new technologies. I hope you have liked this video. Thank you and see you next time.